Hey guys, it's Rebecca. I know this is a weird time to make a video. It's dark outside. I'm in my pajamas. But I think it's time that we have some real talk. I think that there's a point of view on something that really needs to get out there because it's a point of view that's not really heard because there's a stigma attached to it. In light of Robin Williams' death, I thought that I would discuss the thoughts on suicide from someone who has attempted suicide, from someone who has been there. I, myself, have battled with mental illness for most of my life. I'm currently diagnosed with bipolar 2 and I take a number of medications to treat it. There's only been one suicide attempt that sent me to the hospital and that was when I was in ninth grade. Um, but before then and after then there have been other attempts that weren't as serious. Suicide is seen as a taboo, of course. Many people judge it. Many people look down upon it. Many people say, how could they do that to their family? Or, don't they know it's a sin? Or, that's what a selfish act. All of these people, although coming from their own backgrounds and their own point of views, these people are wrong. Choosing to commit suicide is probably one of the most horrific decisions a person could ever make. It tears at your soul. When I found out how exactly Robin Williams died, the first thing that I felt from a person who has attempted suicide is pity. Just extreme pity. Because I know what it feels like to be in that position. I know the feelings that were going through his body and his heart and his mind. I know the thoughts that he thought when he looped that belt around his neck. Even before that, when he picked up that belt, I know the thoughts that were in his head. I know those feelings because I felt them so many times. And they hurt. They hurt in a way that very few people understand. The fact that he probably looked at that belt in his hands and saw an answer, saw some kind of relief from all of the pain and sorrow and anguish that he's been carrying around for God knows how many years. It is a feeling unlike any other and I wish it upon no one. The feeling that you feel when you want to commit suicide is something of it's coming from a place of such pain such extreme pain to think that death by your own hands is the only answer that death 
that ending your life is the only relief that you can get. That nothing else and no one else has the answer. Only ending your life does. People say that suicide is a selfish action. Coming from someone who's experienced the feeling of wanting to commit suicide, I actually call it screwed up logic or fucked up logic. When you are very sick, your logic is messed up. And one of the ways that this logic gets fucked up is you start to believe that your friends and your family and your loved ones are going to be better off without you. You start to apply logic to something that is illogical. For example, one of my things that I battle is that I currently cost my mom money. She has to pay for my doctors and my medication and my place to live and my expenses and one of the things that my fucked up logic uses is that hey Rebecca if you killed yourself you wouldn't be a financial burden on your mom anymore your mom already goes through so much she has to deal with a sick child. You. She constantly has to worry about you. And she constantly has to pay bill after bill after bill. Wouldn't it be easier on her? Wouldn't it be better if you just didn't exist? If you died, she would just have one last payment a funeral, and then she would be done with you. Isn't it nice? Wouldn't it be nice for your mother if you just got rid of yourself? That's the kind of logic that I call fucked up logic that happens when you're really sick. You think that people around you will be better off without you. You can even see in some ways that people commit suicide. I know someone that committed suicide by shooting themselves in the head and they shot themselves in the bathtub because she, in her fucked up logic, thought that the bathroom was going to be the easiest room to clean up. In the bedroom or any other room, it would get on carpet or on furniture. But in the bathroom, it's tiled. And it can be scrubbed away. The way that I attempted suicide was by overdosing on one of my medications. It was available, and it's a quick death if I fall asleep, and there's nothing, nothing messy to clean up. But I use this fucked up logic as to my advantage in some situations. For example, when I have those th suicidal thoughts pop into my head, and trust me, when you have a mental illness, they never go away. They're constantly there. When I'm at those deepest, darkest moments, I remind myself that I don't want my mom finding my body. 
when I lived off somewhere, I didn't have a day-to-day -day thing that I had to do. So the logic that I used was that my body would sit there on the bed and rot and decay and probably wouldn't be found for days. A neighbor, a neighbor would probably eventually complain of the smell or my mom would call wondering it because she hadn't heard from me in about a week. Those are the kinds of things that you cling to. Like I said, suicide is a taboo topic and it has such stigma attached to it due to the things that lead to suicide, mainly mental illness. I decided to make this video to try to break down that stigma. S mental illness is a thing that we should talk about because it happens to many more people than you think. And it's a pain, and it's a torturous way of living that, that those people should not have to hide. I should not have to struggle whether or not to tell someone that I have a mental illness. If I had a physical disability, I wouldn't struggle as to whether or not to tell them I had multiple, multiple sclerosis or something like that. But I have to worry whether someone or, is going to judge me because of an illness that I have because of a disability that I have. It's recognized by the federal government as a disability. I can't help the way that my brain was made to work. I can take the right medication and I can go to doctors and I can go to therapy and I can work every day to make sure that I have it under control as best of my, of my ability. But mental illness is a real thing. And people that commit suicide should never be judged, should never be looked down upon. You should only think of them with pity. Pity their family who just lost a loved one. And pity the pain that they went through. Pity that last moment that they had on earth. I pity Robin Williams because the last moments that he had on earth were moments of such deep, deep, deep pain. And I know that because I've been there. 